All right, we're looking at GSRTA2, and we just start with a very basic uh, idea of just reminding you how to do ratios and proportions. A ratio is just a, basically a comparison be between two quantities. It can be between lots of things, uh, miles and time. It could be between uh, centimeters and feet. It can be between, you name it, ohms and amps and whatever you want. But uh, the key to a proportion is basically the e equating of two ratios. In other words, the ratio on the left is equal to the ratio on the right. That becomes a proportion. There's even some more uh, technical terms. We don't get into this much, but um, A and D are called the extremes, and B and C are called the means. And you know uh, that from e equal, uh, equal fractions, that uh, equality of fractions, three, four, six, eighths, one of the ways to test the equality of those fractions uh, is to cross multiply. You see that 24 equals 24, the three times the eight, the six times the four. We use this phrase cross multiplying, and there are many that don't like cross multiplying, but that's how um, the cross multiplicative pattern works is we multiply the means and the extremes and if they have to be equal to each other. Um, how we use this to solve and why cross multiplying works, let's just give an example. All cross multiplying is doing is it's simplifying um, or quick, quickening uh, what we would do in a few steps. So normally if you want to solve this you would multiply both sides by 8 and this cancels. Notice that the result would be 8 times 3 divided by 4. Now if we did this cross multiplying we would get 4x 4x equals 24 and when we divide both sides by 4 we get 24 divided by 4. It's just the basics of, uh, you know, doing the opposites, the inverse operations, but it is able to summarize it kind of in a quick and simple way, and it's known as cross multiplication. We use the proportions and cross multiplying quite a bit in, in obviously in proportions, dilations with scale factors, and then eventually in similarity. Let's take a look at it. Just to get some background practice on, on the basics of ratios and proportions, um, we just wanted you to experience some of this. This this is mostly preparatory to the real stuff that you'll use uh, when dealing with similar triangles and solving for sides or pieces or parts of triangles using similarity. We wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with it. A couple of things that can happen um, when you deal with ratios. Um, 6 is to 5 is X is to 15, obviously, but you can also say, 5 is to 15 as 6 is to x, and I can see that that answer would be 18 right away. But <clears throat> you can cross multiply. Cross multiplication is just simply a, a way of um, shortening up a number of other smaller steps that actually would take place. Like if you were solving for x here, you'd multiply both sides by 15, and then divide by 5, and so on, and it all works out to be basically the same. So we get 6 times 15 here, and again, we get our 18 value. Um, this is to make sure you understand <clears throat> how to work with uh, x when it's in two different places. And uh, again, all you get is uh, a nice little equation, a linear-based, a single variable equation, and, uh, and then just don't forget to distribute. That is the number one thing that students forget to do. Notice that this 6 turned into a uh, negative 6 turned into a negative 36. And then um, we get there, so it uh, looks like 12 is our answer there. And again, I like to plug it in sometimes to see, uh, to see how it works. So if you put in 12 here, so 6 is to 12, and if you put in 12 there, 12 minus 6 is 6. And that's definitely true. 6 is to 12, 3 is to 6. That definitely works out. Here again, when you cross multiply, uh, you get some nice stuff there. You move that over. 3x equals 21, and we get 7. 
Now the next stuff, I'm not going to solve all these, but maybe I'll help you set them up just to talk about them. Ratios and proportions can often be done many ways, and so don't, don't get locked into maybe one way or another way, but it says the ratio of boys to girls is 4 to 3. There's 20 boys in the class. How many girls? So boys, I always like to put like what, what it is on the side. Boys to girls. And then it says there are 20 boys. And so then it goes and it says how many girls. This is a very easy setup. The ratio of boys to girls is 1 to 3. There are 28 students in the class. How many girls are there? Well, one thing I want you to notice here is this is about boys and girls, but this is about a total. So what you could do, we, we want to know about girls. So we might want to go girls to the total in the class. And let me show you how we could do that kind of in a cool way. So physically, we know that there are 28 total, and we're interested in how many girls there are. So now can we use this to kind of set this up? <clears throat> we know that there are, uh, it's a 1, 2, 3. So the three parts are girls, one part is boys. So girls is 3, total is 4. You see what I just did there? I did kind of a cool little trick. Because this is about a total here, um, we are able to talk about, um, you know, three parts is girl, four parts is total. Uh, X is girl, 28. Another way you could do this is this idea of 1 to 3. Uh, so this is uh, here, boys to girls. And over here, you could say that the girls are X, and the boys are 28 minus X. So this also would find a the identical answer, but basically the idea is uh, boys to girls. And boys, how many there are left over out of the 28? And this would also work nicely. There's often more than one way to do it. I like these ones where they say, you know, a triangle has angles in a particular ratio. Now, the way I like to do these, you can do this a couple of ways. You could say, well, 1x plus 2x plus 3x all equals 180. The three angles, this one, that one, and that one, all in the ratio of 1, 2, and 3, have to add up to this. And you get uh, this value, you get 30, and then you can plug it in. So 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90. Another way to think about it is that, and it kind of ends up going there anyways, but you can say there are six parts, six parts, and they make up 180 altogether, and then again you get the same answer which we got anyways. This one is using ratios to talk about uh, quadrilateral properties. When they're written like this, they're written in a particular order. So that means like adjacent ones. So the three, the threes are opposite each other. The ones are opposite each other. So we've got something where, you know, we're three times bigger than whatever this is. Um, but they are, the opposite sides are equal. Um, <clears throat> so we can at least figure out uh, that we have to be at least um, a parallelogram in this environment. Uh, I don't think we know enough to say whether it's a rectangle or otherwise here, but we do know that because the opposite sides are in proportion this way and this way, then we know we're at least in a parallelogram. Just uh, one or two more quick ones here. Um, we can see uh, a recipe as some cups, uh, water to, um, let's see, water to powder, and you use 10 cups of water. That's pretty easy. Water to, to uh, powder, you use 10 cups of water. Again, I always like to do this on the side to keep things going. And then find the powder. Juniors to freshmen, 45 in the club. Again, here, this is about juniors and freshmen. But the 45 is about total students. So again, you'll create a ratio probably uh, about totals. So how many juniors are there? So I'd probably go juniors to total. So uh, let's see, three parts of the juniors, three parts of the juniors, five parts is the total, 
45 students and I'm interested in juniors. To see how I'm doing that, three parts junior, five parts total, uh, X is juniors, 45 is total, and so on. Okay, enjoy, they're, they're fun.